Good evening, Grace. It is Thursday. It is Maundy Thursday. It is Holy Thursday. Christian persons in various communities around the world this night are gathering, just as we are, to begin the process of remembering more closely the last days and hours of Jesus' life. And so right now, it is Thursday. Mondi is a word that comes from the word meaning commandment. And we will hear read what that commandment is from Jesus for all of us. I invite you to take a breath, to receive the feel of the room. It's a little different than it is on a Sunday morning. And to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our midst as we worship together. I invite you as we begin, as you so wish, if you wish to join us to stand for our call to worship and for our first song. This is a day to remember. We remember the Passover Jesus shared with his disciples. We remember his new covenant of broken bread and cup. We remember his night alone in the garden in prayer. We remember his arrest, his trial, his suffering, the denial of his friend. We remember this day and thank God for Jesus' presence. We're going to remain standing to sing our first song for the bread which you have broken in our Red United Methodist hymnal, number 614.
bread baked every day in every Jewish household and shared. And he gave thanks to God. He broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. May this be as my body for you. May this be a reminder every time you eat of it of who I am and who you are called to be. And just as the yeast and the salt and the wheat mix together and bring forth a miraculous loaf of bread, so each of you mixed together bring forth a miraculous body of Christ. We give thanks to God for the bread. And after the supper was over, Jesus took a cup, gave thanks to God for the fruit of the vine, and gave it to them and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of a new covenant, a new commitment, a new coming together, a new community. We want this to be like something people are not used to seeing. We want people to cross barriers, again, of, of status, of economics, of Roman, of, of Jewish, of male, of female, those who were enslaved, those who were free. It was scandalous. And yet Jesus lifted the cup and said, let it be so amongst you. And if you do this in remembrance of me, this will ripple out all over the world. And indeed, it has. And so we invite you this night to come forward. We have one station tonight. And so um, Terry, our usher, our fabulous usher, will dismiss you. Tonight we're mixing it up from Sunday since we only have one station. We're going to invite you to come out the middle, and then you can go back whatever side you came, you came from. And we invite you to come forward and to receive the gifts.
invite you to join me for the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is now Friday. Good Friday. Tenebrae. The office of the Tenebrae goes back to the fourth century, meaning shadows or darkness. We enter a time now of reading and story and music as we inch ever closer alongside Jesus to his final moments. Our first reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 1 through 14, betrayal and arrest, Jesus and the high priest. Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, where he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to him, to them, I'm he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. And when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Please turn to page 297, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2.
second reading is John 18, verses 15 through 24. Peter denies Jesus. The high priest questions Jesus. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to, to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, Are you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I'm not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. third reading is from John chapter 18 verses 25 through 32. Peter denies Jesus again and Jesus before Pilate. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself and they said to him, are you not also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. Please join me in singing verse 3 of Beneath the Cross of Jesus, number 297.
Our fourth reading comes from John chapter 18, verses 33 to 40. Jesus before Pilate. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? fifth reading is from John 19.1 through 16a, Jesus sentenced to death. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns, and put it on his head, and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See? I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crowns of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was the more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you, do you not know that I have power to release you? And power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Please turn to page 292 in your hymnal. What wondrous love is this? Please join me in singing verses 1 and 2.
The sixth reading is from John, chapter 19, verses 16b through 24. The crucifixion of Jesus. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answers, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them to be crucified. Seventh reading is John chapter 19, verses 25 through 30, the crucifixion of Jesus. So they took Jesus and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jew Jewish chief priests then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Please. Please join me in singing verses 3 and 4 of What Wondrous Love Is This, page 292. Jesus' side is pierced. 
since it was the day of preparation. Then Pilate took Jesus in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath. For that Sabbath was a high day. The religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they may, might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him who they have pierced. The ninth reading, John chapter 19, verses 38 through 42, the burial of Jesus. After this, Joseph of, Arima of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who at first had come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Were you there when they crucified?